In this video, we're going to take a look at limits again, and we're going to be combining limits with the summation notation we've already been talking about already. So, with this, uh, what we have to do first is we need to put in the special summation formula in place of this, because our limit is going to n, n goes to infinity, but we want to turn that into something that has n's in it, so that way we can calculate the limit. So what we'll do is first put in the formula, so this I'll keep the same, and I have n times n plus 1 over 2 is a summation formula that goes in for that. So again, that video I had before talked about how you can turn these summations into exact sums here. Now that we have this complete, we're going to multiply all this out, top and bottom. Okay, so if we do that, we have n squared plus n, all that over 2. And we're going to keep on going with this, which means that we're going to multiply across the top, across the bottom. So I get limit as n goes to infinity. And it's going to be n squared plus n, all over 2n squared. Now in order to calculate this limit, what you want to do is break this apart. And we're going to do two different ones. We're going to do limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over 2n squared plus n over 2n squared. We're allowed to split this up because we have only one term there that's going to be on the bottom, so we're allowed to break it up to do that step there. When I simplify this, the, the first part is going to be just 1 half, and then the second part I'm going to get is going to be 1 over 2n. I'm going to apply the limit to each one of these. Now remember, we have to kind of go back to the limits we talked about in the beginning of this course, where if you have a number on top and you have a variable on the bottom, what happens is, as n goes to infinity, as this bottom part gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the whole thing is getting smaller, which means that this whole thing is actually going to end up going to zero. So we have one, one half plus zero, which means that your final answer is going to be equal to uh, one half. So one half will be the limit for this one. So now let's take a look at another limit example. Okay, so here's the next limit example. This time I have an i squared on the inside. So again, like we did before, first thing you want to do is put a formula in for that one because that way we can calculate the limit since we'll have an n in it. Okay, so 64 over n cubed. Now, there's two different versions of that formula. There's the one that has it all with parentheses, n, n plus 1, 2, n plus 1. But instead, I want to use the one that's expanded because I'm going to have to expand it all anyway. So that's why I gave you the expanded versions on those formulas because that way it makes it easier when you're working with limits to break them up. So, uh, so first thing we'll do is we'll put that in. So 2n cubed, make sure I get the right formula, n squared plus n, and that's all going to be over 6. Okay, so that's the, that's the formula that will go in for inside the brackets there. Uh, 1 to n i squared, that turns into this, that's the expanded form. Okay, so now we have that, now we're ready to do some uh, simplifying here. Okay, so first thing we'll do is we're going to notice that we can cross cancel the 64 and the 6. So for this one, I can uh, divide that by 2, so I'll get a 3 down here, and this is going to be uh, 32. So that's the first thing I'll do is do a cross cancel. Now that I've done that, I want to multiply across the top and across the bottom for what I have left. So I'm going to do 32 times everything on top and then I'm going to multiply across the bottom one. When we multiply we'll get uh, 3n cubed there, but the top one I'll multiply through. 64n cubed and then I get uh, plus 96n squared plus 32n and that would be the expanded version, so now I don't need the brackets anymore since I've distributed. Like the last problem, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything on top divided by 3n cubed. So we're going to do limit, n goes to infinity, 64n cubed over 3n cubed, 96n squared over 3n cubed, and then 32n, divide that by 3n cubed. So everything on top is divided by that one on the bottom. We're going to do a simplifying step. So we're going to do limit and goes to infinity. Now we're going to simplify each of these. This is 64 thirds, and that's it. For this one, 
uh, when we divide that, we're going to get 32 over n. Okay, 93 divided, 96 divided by 3 is 32, and then the n goes in the bottom there. And then finally, this last one, I have 32 over 3n squared left over. As n goes to infinity, again, anytime you have an n in the bottom and you have a constant on top like that, these last two things are going to end up going to uh, zero. Again, if you take a number and keep dividing by larger and larger, the whole result gets smaller, which means that your final answer for this whole problem is going to be 64 over 3. Okay, we have one more limit problem. n's going to infinity, and uh, we have summation with n's and i's, all kinds of things going on in there. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to first limit n goes to infinity. First thing I want to do is I'm going to multiply on the inside there. So if I multiply, I get 4i over n squared. So just multiply it out. Now, next what I want to do is I want to take out everything that is not an i. Okay, so I want to, I want to take that out and I'm allowed to remove it outside of the summation sign. I'm going to put a 4 over n squared out here. Now, why am I moving that out? Because this is not, uh, doesn't have a variable i. The, the i that's here is the main variable. Yeah, there's an n there also, but that's just saying what you're going to take i up to. With this, I want to keep it in this form. I want to move everything out because this is where I'm going to look at my summation formulas, then I'll know which one uh, to put into that. So if you have something like that happening, it's better actually to pull all the ends on the outside and just leave this the way it is. So now, once I have that, I'm ready to put in the formula for it. Okay, and with the i, what I'm going to use is, I'll use the expanded version on that, which is going to be n squared plus n over 2. That's the one that I want to use. Okay, it's always better again to use the expanded version. Now that I've done this, like I've been doing with my other limit problems that I had before, multiply across the top, across the bottom, and then we're going to separate all the different terms. So I'm going to do limit, n goes to infinity. We're going to do 4n squared plus 4n on the bottom. I have 2n squared, so now that I've multiplied out, I'm going to separate each term individually, so that way I can find the limit. 4n squared over 2n squared, and then 4n over 2n squared. And then once I've broken it up into that, into both of those, I'm going to reduce those. Okay, so this just turns into a 2. The other one over here will turn into a 2 over n, will be left over. And as n goes to infinity, this term is going to once again go to 0, which means that my final answer for this limit problem is going to be 2.